You're listening to This Week in Property. Stay current, relevant and up to date in the world of property investment. Learn from the UK's leading property professionals and grow your property business. Hello and welcome to today's episode of This Week in Property. I'm your host Richard Swan and in today's show we are going to be tackling the subject of Goldmine Area Expert. Very fancy title. Now to get stuck into that topic let's find out who our guests are today. We have from the world of ALG we have Mr Sean McIntyre. Hello sir. Hello. Hello. Good man. Good, good to have you here. And uh, two other legends in the property empire world. Uh, both checking that. Yes. Both giving me nods of approval. We have Alex Summers. Good morning sir. Good morning. All good today? Fantastic. Fantastic. Excellent. And your much better half, the much lovely better, Jane better. Buckingham. I'm um, glad you said that, Richard. <laughs> of course. <laughs> nice to see you. Who's got her coffee, she's all ready to rock and roll. We've got a nice sound effect at the back actually with a, a leaking gutter. I don't know if the listeners can pick up on that. I'm uh, glad you threw that in there, it's a leaking gutter and know somebody's standing outside. Yeah, know, that, 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 could, be, that could be a real bad sign <laughs> to having your, your head as an image. We should maybe just burst into a refurbs uh, episode, <laughs> you know, <laughs> properties falling apart and stuff. <laughs> But uh, that's typical rainy Glasgow. Right, let's get our teeth into this one. Gold mine area experts. Very fancy. Alex, first up, what on earth is that? What would, in the world of property, how would you kind of describe or start to tackle the, the kind of idea of it? Because loads of listeners, loads of different uh, experiences in property, guys in for 35 years, people listening that just want to start, and they might not have a clue where to start, how to start. Yeah. So if we say to them, oh, a good thing is maybe becoming a gold mine area expert or an expert in your gold mine area, what are we telling them? What's the kind of, how would you describe that to someone? Okay. Simple terms, I think it's, um, it's really just being aware of your local area, the area that you are specifically targeting. Right. Um, and really knowing the area inside out. Right. You know, and it doesn't have to be a massive area. Mm-hmm. Your local can be smallish. Mm-hmm. Obviously, as you get more experienced, you would expand on that but at the start you know um a few thousand houses within your area right and uh, just really just getting to know the area know the streets mm-hmm. know the prices you know how much does a two bedroom cost a three bedroom so that then when anything comes up you're on the ball right away you right know exactly how much it's worth you know how much you know you know you know how much it could could be worth to you mm-hmm. and um and basically you can work your Work your magic, basically. Work your magic and yeah. Just and find those deals and take it forward, yeah. Absolutely. Right. So Jane, is it more a kind of a gut level, an instinct level that you've built up? It's not just a, in the head, I've got such and such, or on my computer, I've got these three spreadsheets. Being a gold mine area expert, is it a case that you're able to, yeah, there's, mm-hmm. there's a potential in that deal? Or someone that's talked to me just now about this two bed flat, I can feel that that might work. And is it that kind of level? I think it's a mixture of both and it is, it? It, it is for me and, and certainly from, from when I first started out mm-hmm. it was more it was more data led actually. I had oh, a spreadsheet, right. I put I plugged in if near enough every property that came up within our gold mine area, I plugged it into my numbers spreadsheet and right. I built up a data set of what does a walk in condition two bed flat in that street go for, right. what does a three bed in that street go for and um and what I actually did to to get to know it better as well, is I actually went out and I viewed even walk-in condition properties in my uh-huh, local area right. to get a feel for what's a walk-in, what is a walk-in condition, right. what does it look like, um, so that I, I, you know, so that I, I know for sure, and then I keep an eye on that and I see what it goes for. Right. Um, so I start off with building up a kind of data set and, and building up my experience, but then over time it becomes a gut level reaction right. where you just gotcha. know when you see something. But you've got to train yourself. You've got to do that learning mm-hmm. and turn it from the mind into the kind of body that is mm-hmm. a, gut, a gut instinct thing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's another good wee throw wee tip you did there for the listeners that. You've went to walk-in condition places mm-hmm. with no uh, no thought at all about buying it or going for it because we we're looking for good deals, we we're looking for discounts, etc. Mm-hmm. But you wanted to actually feel and see what walk-in condition meant rather than just a you know walk-in condition written down in the back paper. Uh-huh. Right, yeah, nice one. That's mm-hmm. a great wee tip. Mm-hmm. Sean, uh, Alex was talking about area sizes, etc. Uh, the throwaway line, I think it was a thousand houses. Would you go along with that? Would you advise listeners to do a specific distance? Is it houses? What? How should we kind of start with our area? Yeah, um, 
for me, when I started my area, I, I went very small, like a quarter mile radius. That's, yeah, that's kind of where I started. Because even within that, you're still going to get, you're going to get a lot of different streets in there. Right. Um, and as you get used to the, the figures, the, the end values of the properties, and you know what, what properties are selling for, then you can start to expand that. You can go for a quarter mile up to half a mile, up to a mile. Right. And How long has it taken for that journey to happen, really? It can take it can take a long time. Can it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a good few months, and you should be, you know, a good mile or two miles. But mm-hmm. again, it depends how how long you spend getting that data that Jane was talking about. Right. You know? So you should be doing half an hour, an hour every day, just right. getting those figures in your head, so it becomes instinctual. So it becomes that gut feeling that, that Jane's talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, because you need to know the streets. You need to know the areas that are good and the areas that are bad. Right. The benefit of working in an area that you know and you've grown up in, then everybody knows the bad streets, everybody knows the places <laughs> that, that you don't go and you don't want to live in there. But when you're going some a, a Goldman area that's out with your location that you've grown up in, uh-huh. then you need to start you need to start small and you need right. to expand out for that. I take it for that point. Yeah. Okay. And when we want to know this property, that property what types of use guys running with? So, for example, off TikTok, I need to know one bed flats, or I need to know three bed houses. How deep and how detailed do you use go? You know, for yourself, Jane, for example, when you were starting your spreadsheets and stuff. Um, was it so every single type, or um, was it only certain types? I probably wouldn't bother to. In my own experience, I uh-huh. haven't bothered too much focusing on the one beds because, right. for the start, there's not an in our initial gold, gold mine area. There weren't a huge amount of wind beds, right? But also for the strategies that we were following at the time, which was package deals, mm-hmm. there's much more interest in two beds, three beds, right? Um, because they are much more easy to to rent out, much more easy to resell, right? Um, is it same at the top as well? Would you max out? You wouldn't you wouldn't care what a five bed mansion is or if a, you know does it? Does there also a resale in there? You wouldn't touch them specifically. Again, in our gold mine area to begin with, there there uh, there weren't many. There right. was a lot of three beds. There was a lot of three bed cottage flats in, in our initial gold mine area. Mm-hmm. Um, but as we've expanded out and as we've actually increased the radius of our gold mine area. We are actually moving into areas where there are those type of properties. Ah, right, okay. Um, so, and we've kind of changed, not changed our strategy, but we've expanded and, and added to the strategies that we work as well. So, mm-hmm. we aren't just focusing on package deals. We're actually looking at buying flips. We're actually looking at our own projects. We're actually um, sourcing to order. These all these sort of things, which mean that you actually need to know more. You actually your gold mine area becomes wider mm-hmm. and, and as a result you actually need to know you know the, the different numbers for probably a wider variety of properties right but you're still sticking to your own criteria as an investor is that the deal you become the expert roughly but you personally you still stick to your own criteria of these are the deals i'm doing is it that kind of juggling act that you're doing well we have our own criteria for ourselves uh-huh. That we we but we um work with lots of different investors who have lots of different criteria of for their, for themselves uh-huh. and um you know lots of different ideas about what a great investment is. <laughs> so exactly. we tailor our, our offering to what our investors are looking for. Right, and in, in particular, just now as well, Jane saying that you know that yeah, we stick to the one bedroom. Oh, sorry, the two bedroom, three bedrooms, but. I know she's telling fibs here. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, because he's controversy. Because all right now, right now we're just, we're just, we're in the, we're in right. the verge of punching a deal, which is a one bedroom. Oh, really? But the thing right. about, you know, having the knowledge that we do, uh-huh. it's got potential it could be converted into two. Ah, um, right, fantastic. So made bigger, adding more value. So that's, yeah. so that's, um, yeah, so it's good to, to know and to be able to see, to be able to, be able to see those deals as well and, yeah. and pick, pick up on them. And um, June's mentioned as well about that. I didn't need to keep jumping in here and just to say, well, you're not there. That's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 She's also saying about, you know, we've, we've expanded our, our gold mine area. Now, we've expanded it a wee bit to probably all of Scotland. Yeah, <laughs> 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 you know, um, Which is just a wee bit bigger than what we're, what we're, what we're planned on. That's, but, that's um, not really a quarter mile <laughs> radius, is it? <laughs> but, no, I think we went kind of into the... Yeah, with a wee bit, but, um, but yeah, that's, that's where we're at at the moment. Anyway. 
I think what Alex was saying there about um, the, the one to two bed conversion, that is the benefit of becoming the local expert. Right. Because that property, I'm not saying that you have your gold mine area has to be your local area where you live, but it just so happens that ours was. Mm -hmm. um, and that property is basically... I don't know, I'm not very good with my distances, but <laughs> probably a, a few hundred yards. It's, it's maybe about 150 metres away from... Yeah, away from it? where we actually stay. Ah, yeah. oh, um, right. So, so, and where, where our specific gold mine area, there is that very clear differentiation between the really nice bit right. and the really not so nice bit. Gotcha. And the thing is that it's so close together that if you weren't a local expert, you could actually get confused yeah. by what it is that you're looking at and right. what, what the end value could potentially be. Uh -huh. I'm very, very comfortable with the end value of this property that we're speaking about. Right. Um, but, you know, if you didn't know the area, you, you probably wouldn't even look at it or consider it. Mm -hmm. um, Excellent. Now, Sean, you teach uh, a lot of people in the, the protege programme that ALG gives through their academy. What? How do they know, or what sort of tools can they use to get to know those numbers? So we've talked about why we should get to know them, and we can have this instinct gut reaction, or that's that can be a conversion, or this is going to walk in price, it's going to be such and such. What can we do when we're starting out? How can we learn? What sorts of tool sets do you teach people? The the very first thing that I, that I started on was, was right move. Right. Just putting in the postcode of the area and without doing a, a video podcast, I couldn't give you anything <laughs> that right move does. Yeah. It's something you, you need to dive into and immerse yourself in uh -huh. and find out all the wee things that it can do in terms of you can you can specify a particular area that you want to look at. So you uh -huh. can actually draw that area out right. on a map on the computer. Um and then you can look at all the recent sold prices. Right. So there's right move for that. There's Zoopla that does something similar. Uh -huh. But I prefer using right move because it pulls a lot of the information from the land registry as well. So right. it means you can you can tap in to see all the recent sales of a particular property. Uh -huh. You can see how many times it's sold in the last ten years and everything as well. So uh -huh. for me, that's where I started. Right. Um, and you get a good idea of this is an area that I want to invest in, mm -hmm. or these prices are too low or too high for me, so I'm going to look somewhere else. But once you've once you're getting to grips with the prices, as Jane said, like go out and view walk-in condition properties. Uh -huh. You need to go out and physically see them. Right. You need to go out and speak to estate agents because that's where you're going to get a lot of information as well, is when you're actually on the ground in the property yourself, seeing it for yourself. Uh -huh. But right move is, is a great tool to, to use, it really is. That's your main one. And is there any other portals you play around with or cross-check or cross-reference? Yeah, so right move, Zoopla, um, use the home.co.uk as well that one's uh -huh. that's really good if if you are more like Jane in terms of data and pulling in figures that will give you a lot of information in terms of the average time that a property is going to sit on the market for right a, a two bed in this property takes 70 days to sell a three bed takes 50 days to sell so depending on how itty bitty you want to get with it right you can dive Just into that and, and, yeah. right, okay. um, and again the thing about right move as well as giving you the sole prices, it will also give you the, the rental income as well you can expect. Right. So you can start to look at things like that and then you can balance that up with, obviously in Scotland you've got the, the LHA, mm -hmm. you've got that on the website so you can find out you know, what your rental income is going to be, that you know is pretty much guaranteed at that price. Uh -huh. Obviously private rents are then, you can tailor it to yourself and it can go a wee bit higher. Sure. But um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the ones that I would use. So being an expert, we're covering ourselves for sale prices, yep. but we're also covering ourselves for knowing off the top of your head or quite instinctually the rental you can get as well. And it's not just the numbers, is it the actual demand as well that you need to become an expert on? Yeah, I yeah. mean, that's, that's, that's something that a lot of people will forget in uh -huh. terms of, all right, that's a great flat, we know we can get £600 a month. But you put it on the market and it will sit there for, for three or four right. days empty. Uh -huh. If you've got a buy to let, you want as little void periods as you can possibly have. Uh -huh. So you need to make sure that the demand's there. And again, that comes down to just doing your, your research within your gold mine area and going out and speaking to the agents and getting a feel for it. If it's not somewhere that you love yourself, that, you've, right. that you know the area already, then you need to go out and tap into the other experts that are there uh -huh. and, and get information from them. Right. Now, Alex, you, you threw in a great example of, that you're running just now, a one-to-two-bed conversion. How on earth do I become an expert in that? 
I can look on, you know, right move and I see that three beds are going to go for 95,000 or whatever. But how do I get that knowledge? How do I become that expert? Well, if you've got a few quid, you can come talk to me and we can join venture together. Excellent. <laughs> That's a good start. I can definitely yep. help you there. Ben. It's basically, you know, it's like Sean said as well, you going out to the flats, looking at them, looking at the floor plans if they're on right move. Or, but basically getting out there and looking and being, right. getting creative and looking at spaces within the within the, the properties to see if it's possible because I, right. I tend to go to a lot of flats right and general voucher list as well here that then um, i go to a lot of flats and they're already dead wee but i want to squeeze in even more <laughs> I, I think i've got another I'll get, I'll get all of them in that kitchen and I'll, get, I'll move that there and I'll move that there so um, you try to create yeah. these Japanese point yeah, hotels absolutely, yeah. so I try to squeeze as much as possible but um, but then I show Jane and, and she'll kind of give, me, give me the trouble say, don't be silly come on but um, yeah so I mean basically getting out to view them right can I get a wee feel for like how, how small is small how, you know you don't want to obviously make it ridiculously small and end up, sure. you can't sell it, you know, you're in about a few quid, so mm-hmm. uh, just get in viewing, uh, measuring up maybe as well. That's what I was going to say, have your measure. toolbox, have your, so have your measuring tape, uh-huh. make sure your phone's there with your charge on it so you can take a video yeah. so that you can remember what you've seen. Right, right, so you guys are doing this as well, right, yeah. brilliant tips, right, yeah. okay. Um, yeah. What else is in that kit, anything else we need to worry about? Have you done your homework with what Sean was talking about, with right move? back at home and then when you're in the place it's a completely different thing you're running with you're physically moving around you're taking pictures you're taking videos you're measuring is that the kind of different mindset once you're in there yeah i think we're lucky because we're working together as well so uh-huh. actually alex is out in the field a lot and he'll do all that sort of stuff the, the heavy lifting if you like and <laughs> he'll do all the viewings and all the running about right. and then i'll have the, the video and i'll work through the video and i'll already have done some sort of probably going into due diligence a little bit but I'll already have done some numbers we'll have a feel for um, you know what the end value could be and stuff like that and then we'll verify all that with the home report and um, the, the the video that Alex um, brings back as well and also any measurements and stuff right. that as well as there. Okay dogs. Now I'm going to pull on the thread of working condition and we've established the fact we want to know what it is, we want to know what the value is but that's not what we're chasing, we're going to chase something you know, much less than that, maybe a uh, lesser condition, has been, hey, maybe some kind of inheritance that's been left for months and months and months and the family's now selling it. So part of that figures then, Alex, is going to be, I need to refurb this or I need to improve this. Mm-hmm. How do I become an expert in that, in my area? Okay. What's the kind of process there? Okay. So really getting a good builder, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. right. get, getting a good builder who's, who's a... It's just really known the numbers again, which, which is uh, all down to Jane. But <laughs> 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 I don't really, really bother me. You know, um, we, what, what we have done is now is if we've actually systemized, well, Jane systemized a, a, a spreadsheet as well that just basically all the numbers get plugged in to to know exactly how much it would be for getting a, a you know fully plastered and fully redecorated and a full right. rip out. Do you know all these? Um, to get to know these numbers yourself, uh-huh. you've really got to speak to some trades guys and the right. builder and see exactly how much that's going to be because all builders are different and some are going to charge a wee bit more or a wee bit less or whatever. Uh-huh. But um, it's having it's having these guys, you know, on the end of the phone that can come and maybe press up for you and uh, right. basically plug them in, plug the numbers in, and just yeah. and just really just really keep in topic as well. I think. Um, because prices change as well. Well, exactly, yeah. that's right. So you've got to, you're not just becoming an expert in that shoe. Yeah. It's going to continue, is it? It's a journey that just keeps going. Aye, absolutely. I mean, um, I, it's, it's forever changing. Uh-huh. Um, and you've just really got to keep it open. If you don't, it could end up being quite expensive. Right. By, by, by keeping it open and knowing your numbers and, you know, like I said, me, you know, I just, I'll take videos and I'll, um, I'll, you know, I'll see anything within the properties that I go to, I'll see really when it's done. Uh-huh. Um, and then, and I'll speak th- through doing these videos, I'll speak all the way through these videos uh-huh. so that I can give Jane every single bit of information right. as possible, you know, as I'm walking through nice and slowly, if it needs new doors, wiring, blah, 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 whatever, uh-huh. I will then send it to Jane. Jane really just plugs the numbers in Excellent. and uh, keeps on top of it so that we know 
exactly how much that refurb cost is going to be. Yeah. And then obviously mm -hmm. that whole price gets plugged in with the rest of the numbers, mm -hmm. to see whether it's a deal and what we can offer, and all this is to continue. take it from there. The thing is, you, you'll get to that stage in time as well. I think that's, a lot of people want to jump the gun, you know, <laughs> in terms of, right, this refurb's going to cost £13,000. They've got no idea yeah. where that those costs are coming just from. Just that number you know, in here. And you'll get to the stage where, or the stage that you want to be at, is when you're out viewing a property yourself, you can pretty much price it up, but you'll only be able to do that off the back of working with your builder mm -hmm. and building that relationship with them. Uh -huh. Whether that means getting them to come out and view a property with you that you're maybe looking to buy, what I would advise is don't do that too often. Because right. you know, if builders are busy, yeah. and they should be because you want a good one, yeah. um, then they've not got the time to constantly come out and look at every single property you're, you're looking at because yeah. for every 30, 40 properties you're going to view, you can maybe only buy one or two at the most. Sure. Um, so for me, it was a case of doing what Alex would say there about taking a video and then maybe even sitting with your builder and going, listen, I've got these three properties I've viewed. Is there anything that you're seeing that I've not spotted there or would you need right. to come out and get another look? Gotcha. And over time, you'll get to learn how they price uh -huh. and where they get their costs from. And at that point is when you can then go in and, and price a property yourself uh -huh. and be confident that you're, you're going to be pretty much on the money with it. Gotcha. So these videos, that's a cool idea then to do that, not just for yourself, not just for working in a great team, but to also not waste a builder's time. You can yeah. pass them to them, say, listen, can you have a wee quick look? I'm thinking yep. this, this and this. And then if they spot anything, they can come back to you. Definitely. Brilliant, Definitely. okay. So let's tick off that power team then, these kind of people we're using to become the gold mining area expert anyway. So you mentioned builders, so we know about that. Uh, you touched upon estate agents, your kind of building relationships there. Yep. yep. Letting agents, Letting did you agents. mention? That's for kind of rental position. Anything else we need to know about? Does that cover it? Are you into legals and solicitors at any stage to uh, become the expert? Or that does that point, not matter? At no? that point, not really. No. Um, the only other one I would say is getting in is, is a, a good surveyor. You know, if you're ah, a local, right, okay. A local okay. Surveyor, especially when you're in Scotland and we've got the benefits of having a home report as well for every property. Right. But there may be, there may be the odd moments where you just can't find good comparables mm -hmm. or you're just you, you can't be exact on mm -hmm. this is how much this property is going to be worth and right. be 100 percent confident on it mm -hmm. if you've got a relationship with a surveyor there that you've been using for some of your recent projects as well they know they're getting business from you then it's sometimes it's worth a wee phone call just to say i'm, I'm looking at this property here i'm struggling to find any comparables that, right. that can give me a, an exact figure if you had to come out and do this and it was walk-in condition, what do you think you would get for it? And they'll be able to, they'll be able to guide you on that as well. I think that's a really good point that you've raised, mm -hmm. and that's something that I've I've done that just recently, where that's it. Um, we've got a, a great relationship with a, an estate agent and letting agent in one, mm -hmm. and um, they don't have any vested interest in in the property that I was speaking to them about. But I do know that they know the area inside out, right. so I got them to give me a second opinion about what I was looking at. Mm -hmm. Although there was lots of data, there was lots of information, it was still, I felt, I know they're a really, they're an expert, uh -huh. almost an expert, and that that is almost their gold mine area. That, of course. That area. They, they've sold some really great properties there recently. So I got her to give me a second opinion, and, and, mm -hmm. and I was really chuffed that yeah. she agreed with all was the, the numbers. Oh, <laughs> yeah. brilliant. That, so, so that was really nice, but I, I think that's, that's one thing that's so important is having a great power team. You uh -huh. spoke about it, about having a great builder, and, and it's, it's not, maybe not specifically on um, your gold mine area, uh -huh. but just to be successful. Right, in, in general. In general, in uh -huh. property. I've, I've, it's, it's so absolutely key to have those good relationships and to build up your network. Excellent. Because um, you never know when you're going to need that help. Yeah, to lean on that. Cool. <laughs> now, let's paint a wee scenario. You to start again from tomorrow from scratch, what would you do differently, do you think? There's a big lesson you've really learned, you need to go back to the mm -hmm. drawing board and start all over again as Jane, the gold mine area expert. Is there something, oh God, I wish, see for the start, I wish I'd done such and such. I don't think so because no. I think what happened was I had the benefit of not really knowing anything different. To begin with. To begin with. Ah, right, so okay. all I really knew was what we'd learned right. from from um, from going through the protege course and working right. with the LG. So 
So I just applied what I learned. I didn't have my own ideas mm. about how to do it. I just did what. So you were the blind canvas. Yeah, mm. that's so pretty cool. I, I went away and I set up a website exactly how I was advised. Uh huh. You know, use a name that says, you know, says what it does on the tin. North uh-huh. Glasgow Home Buyers, which you know, um, we went ahead and set up, and and I actually just applied all the stuff that we'd learned. We did the leafleting. We did um, you know, Alex went round and um, put up a leaflet in every single. You know, shop. Yeah. Where else did you put bus dogs, and <laughs> dogs, cats, <laughs> <laughs> just stuck them everywhere? Yeah. yeah. So why are we doing this, Alex? Because we spoke about portals. We spoke about a power team leaning on these people. What is this with marketing and things like this? Why are we doing that to become an expert? What's how's that helping us? Okay, so so to obviously you want to get the deals that are off market. Right. We want to get the deals before they go to auction, before they go to market. We want right. to get the the best deals, and the only way to get to these best deals is. It's through our marketing. I mean, how's anybody going to know? You know, oh, you know, I need to sell my house quick, or I've got, you know, I've inherited the property or whatever it is, and I need to get shot at this 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 property quickly. Um, look, it's time to put it on the right move and get through, you know, the, the process there. Mm-hmm. So how do I do that? And then you know, they get maybe get a wee leaflet through the door, right? And maybe drive down the street and they see one of our boards up, or you know, then you know, but I know that it's it's telling them you can, you know sell your house fast and by doing that they, they contact us and then we you've got to do this if you want to get the better deals if you want to get the better right. deals you've got to get the market in it. and we've found that by by putting the market out put, putting the market out um, uh-huh. the deals the deals come the deals come and it's it's not been the deals that are you know, I think on right move and these other portals you'll, you'll get the odd one right. like, you know, you right. what you search about but to get the really good ones um, as mm. good, do the marketing and, yeah. and, and bring them in yeah. and funnel them into the, supposedly the, the website mm-hmm. you know, so they come into the, 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 the marketing takes them to the website the contact is you know then they, we basically we have a chat with them qualify them go out and see them and uh, you know, negotiate a, a half decent deal something mm-hmm. and not only I'm saying negotiate a deal but something that works for them as well as us you know because we, right. don't, we don't want to be out there you know offering ridiculous deals and but we want to we want to do something that's gonna it's gonna make the, the seller happy as well. Right. That it makes them comfortable enough that uh-huh. they can let it go for a price that they're happy with and it works for us as well. Yeah. And their investors. So it's a win win. It's a win 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 if you're using investors win, win. as yeah. well, yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic. So you're almost becoming an expert in two areas. There's this area that Joe Public sees, right moves and whatever else, yeah. but through your marketing and those techniques, you're becoming an expert in what the real deals are in this area as well mm-hmm. that don't normally get to Joe Public is that kind of fair to say? No, I, don't, yeah. I, th- I think that would be mm-hmm. um, fair it's to say well. secret world that you become the expert in and you're mm-hmm. grabbing these fantastic investments Absolutely. before they get up to the, the general public level if yeah. we call it that way yeah I mean these ones come and uh, every time we, you know, we, we get leads through I mean, it's quite a few leads as well that come through the website. Uh-huh. You know, not everyone is a deal. There's a lot of tire kickers. People just want them to know sure. how much their property's worth. Or you know, they're just they're just tasting. They're just tasting. They're using more knowledge. But yeah. um, but I mean, I don't. I don't really know the exact. Maybe one in eight or something that comes through as a potential deal. And and uh, yeah, by getting them, we we kind of we we behold ourselves. Yeah. I think jumping back to the question you asked Jane about what you would do different, I know yeah. for myself and my experience the thing I would do different is I would go out and speak to those estate agents, land agents etc earlier in my journey earlier, right. a lot of people want to become the expert by themselves right, you know, okay. like, no, no, if I just pretend to myself that I'm working and I'm sitting in the house and I'm doing, I'm doing my right move stuff uh-huh because it's comfortable and it's easy. Yeah. It's difficult to go in. I remember my first estate agent walking into Do you? completely cold off. The, I mean, I'm laughing because I remember Alex's experience <laughs> of this. Oh, remember oh. you went out and you went to every single estate agent. Did you? Um, but the thing is, you, I mean, you <laughs> have to do that. And the, the first one you walk into, especially <laughs> for me, similar to Jane and Alex in the sense that I had no experience in property beforehand. Uh-huh. And I was just implementing the stuff I had been taught mm-hmm. from ALG. And 
I walked into my first estate agent and I, I didn't have a clue what to say. Right. I, like, it was almost like he, the guy was looking at me saying, how can I help you? Uh, I was thinking, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How can you help me? Can you make me an expert, So I, I walked out of that one and I walked into the one that was three doors up and right. done it and was a little bit better. And right. then we went to the next one and I got a little bit better until you walk in with an air of confidence because you now know what you need. You uh-huh. know what you're looking for and you're wanting to let them know that you're working in that area. Right. And that's got two benefits. If you, if you do it early on, uh-huh. you'll get more information quicker. Uh-huh. But also, if you're doing the stuff that Alex and Jane were talking about there in terms of your leafleting and getting your boards up and doing your own marketing to get deals that are off market, uh-huh. then for those properties that don't work for you or for your investors, if yeah. you're getting a state agent sitting there that's yeah. looking for a referral, right. you can go, well, listen, I've got such and such a person here, uh-huh. I need a sale, can I get a wee referral fee for that? Brilliant. And you've now... Off, off the beginning of your journey, you're getting more information, but you're also getting a bit of income, uh-huh. yeah. which is the, the oh. biggest. It's cash flow. It's the biggest thing that people need in a property journey. Gotcha. You're absolutely right. That's that's absolutely that, that's been great, and it's it's actually like becoming a, a bit, giving a better service to the to the clients who get in touch with you because yeah. you're not just saying when they phone up and they say, "Well, I'm just I'm just thinking about selling. I'm just uh, thinking about thinking about it. And I'm just wondering <laughs> how much it might be worth." You, you don't just end the conversation there. You can actually you can actually monetize every inquiry because you gotcha. can say, well, yeah. unfortunately we can't help you, but I know a fantastic estate agent that I can put you on to. And um, you know, it works for the client, it works for the estate agent, yeah. and it works for you as well. So, exactly. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Do you remember those days going around all those agents? I, so? I yeah. remember, <laughs> remember the first one I walked into, it was actually a hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember <laughs> it was actually like that? I think you were mean you gave I think you gave the guy a big spiel mm. about and if you've got properties that aren't selling and we can help with this and, and it turned out he was a letting agent, not a mistake agent. I'm just a cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to be respectful of your time. That's been superb. You've given loads away there. Really appreciate it. So uh, I'm sure you got a lot out of that, listeners. And I would like to thank those guests who've gave you, gave you all of those golden nuggets on the show today. We've had Sean and Alex and Jane. Now, if you would like to connect with any of those guests, all you have to do is go to thisweekinproperty.com and you can check out the show notes for the episode. Now, you'll be able to find there the contact details for all the guests if you want to hook up with them, along with any of the links and resources that we've mentioned while we've been chatting. The two other links I want you to put down, algpropertynetwork.com, and that's if you're looking for high-level networking events in your area. And also, if you're just starting your journey, or you want to start it, or you have started, but you want to take it further, head over to algpropertyacademy.com and check out the resources there. So that's all for today. Uh, Thanks very much for tuning in, and we will see you in the next show. You're listening to This Week in Property. Stay current, relevant, and up to date in the world of property investment. Learn from the UK's leading property professionals and grow your property business.